Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again, and I just woke up and I'm here to update you guys with the uh, Trickster Vortex kind of like build guide progress of the character. So over on the left side of the screen up there, I have a little uh, a little notification kind of the text for um, what I did with the build. That's from the stream, but I figured it'd, it'd help you guys for YouTube as well. So I went Freeze Pulse plus First Snow to level. First Snow are just jewels that you can get for Freeze Pulse, which basically add uh, lesser multiple projectile for free. And I started off by just essentially connecting up like this and getting this jewel. Um, I swapped the Vortex immediately when I hit level 28 because I was just curious to see how it worked. Ideally, you could just still use Freeze Pulse up until you go CI because it I mean, freeze pulse is pretty strong um, and then I decided I wanted to run by and use skin of the loyal I think I was telling you guys about that as well and I actually went CI at level 65 or sorry 55 now let me touch up on a couple things and explain it to you guys as to why this build is pretty fucking cool to level with so currently I've got frostbite uh, and discipline and that's all I'm running right now once I pick up uh, Charisma down here, which I believe I'm actually currently traveling to. <laughs> actually, it looks like I'm traveling here as well. I'm not really sure which one I'm doing first. I think I'm going to connect through here and then respect the, the points here that I don't need and then pick up uh, Charisma and then get like Void Barrier and it'll be really cool. But anyway, so sitting in my hideout, I'm sitting on 3.5k evasion and 7k ES at level 60. Um... Also, if I were to hit my flasks on, I don't have a jade, but I have 5k evasion, don't worry about the armor. And this evasion is going to go up, like, ridiculously high. And the reason why is, Skin of the Loyal is retardedly OP, and I didn't know this, but Skin of the Loyal basically gives 100% increased global defenses. Now, Trickster grants 500 ES and 250 flat ES, sorry, 500 evasion and 250 flat ES. These all get scaled off of the skin of the loyal, which then as well get modified by the nodes on your skill tree. So even in like literal one chaos budget gear, well, I guess it's not really one chaos, but really cheap budget gear, I wanna run you guys what we've got. So I bought these gloves for 4C, they've got 150 ES. Ascent from Flesh is for level 40. It gives us really good ES, it gives us evasion, and gives us free dodge if our recharge starts recently. Because of Trickster as well, we get 20% faster start of Energy Shield Recharge. I believe that's how fast it starts. Uh, Rainbow Strides you can pick up really cheap. They don't really cost anything. Again, this is just leveling gear. You don't have to use this. It's because I wanted to go CI early. Um, it just gives movement speed and all res. Uh, Lehoop, another random ring just to cover resists. Eye of Cheyula uh, for stun immunity. Esh's Mare just gives us a bit of ES. The Gull gives pretty good ES and evasion. And Darkseer as a really good weapon because it gives me 66% elemental damage. Um, and also gives me 60 mana gain on kill and 60 energy shield gain on kill. I might actually use this for quite a while because that's pretty crazy. So... Um, in terms of the tree, uh, I do have my six link skin to loyal already, but it doesn't have like all my special stuff in it, obviously, right? Like I just have a level 14 vortex and a level two empower. Um, I haven't gone with like a crazy empower setup yet, so there is definitely a lot more damage to get. And I do have to say the damage and the AOE, pretty much actually everything about the skill for now seems quite underwhelming, but regardless, I still want to play it. Uh, so just as an example, clearing through. This is with Dual Curse already. Uh, and no, this is actually with Ink AoE. This is not with Conk Effect. As you can see, I have Ink AoE sitting right here. I don't know exactly why they did this to Vortex, but they really gutted the AoE of the skill. Um, so, I don't know what I'm going to do to figure it out. I may try to get like a Vortex AoE Helm Enchant, but I want to lean away from forcing myself into using a Helm Enchant. I may try to pick up the AoE in Templar. Uh, I'm definitely most likely going to intuitive leap down here to grab like skill effect duration, shaper, uh, and some other cool stuff. So we'll see how that goes. The single target is like manageable. It's definitely manageable, uh, which is not too bad. The other cool thing is I have pretty decent ES regen, which isn't too bad either. 
uh, because I'm going Zealot's Oath and I'm getting a bunch of regeneration on the tree. So we're looking at probably near 1k ES regen a second. And I'm actually curious to see how much ES I can pick up considering I'm 7k at level 60. I think the only reason why I can tolerate the AoE of this skill, like with how bad it is, is because I'm not running defensive blasphemies. And because I'm not running defensive blasphemies, um, it's really okay. Like, I'm just running Frostbite and uh, Vulnerability. I don't really have to rely on anything. Like, I don't have to, like, I don't know how to explain it. It just it feels okay because of that reason. Um, I guess because I just walk up to the mob and they're already affected by everything I need. And hopefully, you know, I should be able to hit, I want to say 20k evasion with my Witchfire on. Probably more than 20k evasion. Uh, this is assuming I'm running Grace as well. And, um, I mean, hopefully that's a little extra layer of defense. I mean, I know it's not actual mitigation, but I don't think that evasion is bad when you pair it with CI. I think just relying on an evasion character that has, like, 6k effective life is not very reliable. And, you know, I have as much HP as most endgame characters do at level 60. So I think evasion hopefully will be a nice little touch to it. You know what I think would be really cool as well is if they added, um, we we're talking about this on the stream, if they added like radius per level, like base radius, kind of like what they do with a lot of the new skills now, like if they added one radius every three or four levels, I would say Vortex would be in a great spot. That would also push for people playing it non-crit, like me, right? Uh, so it would get more AoE than crit builds. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. Although, like I said before, I am happy with some other aspects of it. Like, I think the chill is really cool. Um, the chill is definitely, like, a great, great uh, way to utilize the skill. I know a lot of people also play it, like, um... Oh, you know that DD actually hurt? That's my fire res. Not capped. I know a lot of people play this skill as, uh... Uh, what is it? They used to play it Chaos with Pyre, and then that kind of changed. So that's kind of one way. And then a lot of people play Traps as well. I was going to think about playing Traps. The problem is, the like, the cooldown is really going to annoy me, so I decided to stay against Traps. This is it with a massive shrine. If I could get my AoE to be like this, I would actually be pretty happy. Um, I think this is, like, a fine amount of AoE. But I, even then, I don't think this is going to happen at all. I go this way? No, I cannot go this way. It feels bad. There's also the whole option of trying out a bunch of different things. If I don't like the way this works, I can try to go cast on crit. Uh, we can also try to do something meme like, realistically, if I did Cold to Fire, Cast when Channeling, uh, Scorching Ray, then I could do something else. The problem with going Scorching Ray or Cast when Channel is that Cast when Channel will not solve the issue with the skill. Which the issue is basically the lack of AoE and having to cast it multiple times. Because with Castman Channel, it'll actually spawn underneath me. Uh, you know, I'll sit here and channel like Scorching Ray this way, and it'll just keep AoEing vortexes underneath me, which doesn't fix anything. I, I would need actual mobility, and that's what Cast on Crit would give me. But I've never played a Cast on Crit build before, so I'm a little hesitant towards it. You know, I hate these shrines with the gull. I always told people I would never use this thing, and, like, I like it. I don't like picking up the shrines, though. Is that bad? I think another alternative is dropping skin of the loyal and going shafts, but I don't think I want to do that either. For low life, obviously. I guess I am happy to be using Frost Bomb, right? Because Frost Bomb reduces their, uh... Frost Bomb reduces their elemental resistance. And actually, for single target, I still technically can pick up elemental equilibrium. I just can't really spam as much. I have to really make it uh, strictly for damage over time. Because basically, the way elemental equilibrium would work is if I hit a target with a skill, right? So if I hit with Vortex, they gain 25 cold res and they lose 50 fire and lightning. But if I had like lightning damage on my shield charge, right? Then I would hit, they would apply, you know, minus 50 cold res, I would use Vortex, they would gain the cold res back, but then I would hit again with shield charge, and then it would be fixed. So we'll see exactly how that works. Um, because I think that it may be really annoying, but it may be a solution to the build, so who knows. Because if I get to the point where I can just insta-kill white, white mobs and stuff, 
I think it'd be okay of a solution to have. I wonder if the reduced life regen ever does anything good on uh, Frost Bomb. Hmm. I've never really thought about it. Boom. Okay. Oh yeah, and then we might use like Orb of Storms or something. I don't know. I haven't figured out what I'm doing for my elemental overload because I cannot keep this 100% up time like this. I think when I get more cast speed from the Trickster nodes, it'll be a lot better. Because I still have the option of getting um, with the Ascendancy. Because there's actually still quite a few things to pick up, which I'm pretty excited for. Because the character is low level, you know? It's only level 60. We still have, from our Ascendancy nodes, some really juicy ones. Patient Reaper, this is going to be attack speed and cast speed. Anything attack speed and cast speed related is going to be awesome. Because this helps shield charge, also helps the cast of Vortex. Patient Reaper would give additional damage over time, so that's 40% total, with 60% increased recovery rate of mana, which is good for, you know, just regeneration, and Energy Shield, which will scale off my uh, nodes like, you know, Shaper, Life Regen here, uh, Growth and Decay as well, and then Sulfur Flask, I believe. Um, and then last up is either I use a Green Dream, and I believe I put the Green Dream here, which I think says... Is it Cold Res is equivalent to Frenzy Chargers on kill? There's Green Dream, Blue Dream, and Red Dream. Um, and that would just allow me to get Walk the Aether for additional like 16% cast speed and attack speed instead of Swift Killer, but I'd also lose a Frenzy Charge because I plan on helping Creighton. Wait, did I just kill Creighton? Please tell me I didn't. Okay, good, I didn't kill Creighton. I plan on helping Creighton for an extra Frenzy Charge because that plus this is two, two plus your base three is five, Five Frenzy Charges is 20% more damage, attack speed, and cast speed. Uh, so that increase to attack speed and cast speed and the multiplier to damage should hopefully make the build feel a bit less clunky. I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to get my goddamn AoE. And I really think I'm going to use Dying Sun. And I'm pretty sure Dying Sun is not the alternative to use. So we're going to have to figure out exactly what's going on with this Vortex build. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of the build guide. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Um, and if you like the YouTube video, remember, you can like, share, and subscribe, Kappa. All right. Um, the last thing, I do believe, I don't think I went over links. It's in the previous video, but I'm just using Ink AoE, Vortex, Ellie Focus, Empower, Rapid Decay, Control Destruction. For bosses, I just pop in Conk instead of Ink AoE, just like that. Uh, I've also got Frost Bomb just sitting there, Stone Golem just sitting here. Frostbite, Blasphemy is good, and then just Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Fortify. Vault Lightning Trap, and Discipline. Have a golden, boys.